In this video, I will show you how to find the perimeter and area of various polygons. Now, of course, the perimeter is the sum of all the sides. So the first thing we need to do is uh, find the lengths of each side. So uh, in this case, um, let's start by finding the length of this side right here. And I like to use the Pythagorean theorem for this, so I will turn this into a right triangle where the hypotenuse is the side that I'm looking for. Now, the horizontal length is 3, I see, and the vertical length, okay, so that's down 4 and up 4, so that's 8. So, um, that first length is going to be uh, the square root of 3 squared plus 8 squared. So, the square root of 3 squared plus 8 squared. Okay, and that's just the Pythagorean theorem happening. Okay, and that's going to give me, all right, so let's see. Uh, let me make that a little bit bigger for you. So, um, 8 squared plus 3 squared is 73. So this is the square root of 73. Do not leave out the square root. It's important. Okay, so that's the length of that side right there. Now let's uh, switch colors and find the length of this side that I'm tracing in green. Well, this appears to be an isosceles triangle because this is over 3 and down 8 as well. Okay, so that means um, I'm going to get it, the same thing. This would be 3 squared plus 8 squared again. So that would be another radical 73. And then, uh, of course, the length across the bottom, we can simply count, count these up. So I'm talking about this purple length right here. And I see I have 4 to the right. 2 to the left, so that's a total of 6. Okay, um, and I just counted that. And uh, so now we can find the perimeter by adding all of these up. So the perimeter is going to equal the sum of all of these. So um, in my calculator, I can just do radical 73 Okay, have to get out from under there, plus radical 73, get out from under the radical, plus 6. Okay, so I get this expression, um, but I'm going to go ahead and turn this into a decimal. Um, let's see, two decimal places, so 23.09. So 23.09. Okay, and it doesn't give me any units. I'll just put U for units, just to be on the safe side. So that is my perimeter. So um, I'm going to go ahead and erase this as I go back to do the area. Okay, um, so for the area, this is a triangle. So I know that the area of a triangle is one-half base times height. Um, so this is the base right here, all right? So the base is this 6, okay? And the height is this, all right? What I'm tracing in green is the height, and that is 8. So when I do one-half base times height, Okay, that's going to be 1 half 6 times 8. Okay, and half of 6 is 3, so this will become 3 times 8. Um, so that's going to be 24. And because this is an area, I'm going to put units squared. All right, let's go again for problem number two, perimeter and area. 
Let's start with the perimeter. Okay, and I'm going to start with this length right here that I'm tracing in red. And again, I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem to help me out with this. I find that to be the easiest way. So the horizontal length is 2, and the vertical length is 6. Okay, so that particular length is going to be the square root of uh, 2 squared plus 6 squared. All right, so 2 squared plus 6 squared, that's 40. So uh, that length is the square root of 40. Okay, now the rest of my lengths are all um, horizontal and vertical, so I can just count for these. All right, so for example, this length right here is 5. All right, so I just counted that and I got 5. Okay, and then this length right here, I'm counting that, and that is 6. Okay, and this length up at the top, all right, I'm counting that, and that is 7. Okay, so if I add this all up, I'm going to get the perimeter. Okay, so my perimeter is going to be the square root of 40 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7. All right, so I get this expression, which is 24.32. And I'll put units because this is a length. Okay, now I'm going to erase these markings to get ready to do the area. Now, um, I know the formula for the area of a rectangle, and I know the formula for the area of a triangle. All right, this is neither of those. Technically, this is a trapezoid, and I do know the formula for the area of a trapezoid. But what if you didn't know the formula for the area of a trapezoid? You should still be able to solve this problem, and I'm going to show you how. If you know the formula for the area of a um, rectangle and a triangle, you should be able to solve this problem using those two things. Now, I'm just going to change the colors here a little bit. Okay. So uh, my strategy is to divide the shape into um, regions, into separate areas. Uh, I'm dividing it into rectangles and triangles. So this is uh, area number one, and this little triangle is area number two. Okay? Um, so the area of the whole shape should be... Um, the area of shape 1, okay, plus the area of shape 2, okay, that's going to be the area. Um, so that means the area should be. Um, now the area of a rectangle is base times height, okay, so um, area 1 and you know what, maybe I'll just do it that way. Okay, so area 1 is base times height. Okay, so the base is this. Okay, so the base is 5. And the height is 6. Okay. So that means that area number 1 is 30. Okay, how about area number 2? Okay, now the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. 
So this one was base times height, and this one is one half base times height. Okay, so this is going to be one half base times height. So um, the base is going to be this right here, all right? So the base is two. The height is this red line, which is six. Okay, so one half base times height becomes one half two times six. Um, two times six is 12. And half of that is 6. So I've got 30 and I've got 6. So those are my two separate areas. So if I add them up, all right, the total area should be 36. And because this is an area, I'm going to put units squared. All right, we're going to use the same strategy of uh, on problem number three that we did on problem number two. I'm going to take this strange polygon and divide this up into rectangles and or triangles. Now when I divide this up I'm going to always use uh, horizontal and vertical lines. There's more than one way to do this. Um, there's more than one way to do this. So you should get the same answer no matter which way you choose. So here's how I'm going to split this up. So if I put one line right there, so now I've got a triangle down here, but up here this is still not a triangle. So I'm going to further split this up by putting a vertical line right here. Okay, now I've got three zones. Um, and I will call this zone number one, and this will be area two, and this will be area three. Okay? So area one is a triangle. So, oh, you know what? I forgot to do the perimeter. Um, you know what? I'm doing the area. I'll go back and do the perimeter. Don't ask me why I'm doing this out of order. Um, so uh, area number one is a triangle. Okay, the area of a triangle is one half base times height. So it's going to be one half something times something. Okay, now the base is, uh, this will be the base right here. So that's three. And the height is this red line, which is also three. Okay, half of nine uh, is 4.5. So this is 4.5. So area one is 4.5. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and find area number two. Area number two is a rectangle. So the area of a rectangle is just base times height. So the base um, of the rectangle is just this two. And the height is three. Okay, so that area is going to be six. All right, now area number three. All right, this is a triangle again, so this is, is going to be one half base times height. Okay, so for this, um, the base is this blue line that I just drew. Okay, and that, uh, that base is four. All right, the height is this over here. All right, the height is always perpendicular. Um, that is also four. All right, so half of four is two. Two times four is eight, so I get eight. So I'm gonna add this up, all right, for the total area. So we can just do 4.5 plus six plus eight, 18.5. And I'm going to put units squared because this is an area. All right, so now I'm going to go back and do the perimeter. Okay, so the perimeter is just the sum of all the sides. Most of these are horizontal or vertical, so I'm going to be able to count those. The one that I can't simply count is this diagonal one. 
all right? And whenever I want to find the length of a diagonal line that's on a graph already is I like to use the Pythagorean theorem. All right, so I'll make this right triangle where the length I want is the hypotenuse of it. Um, so the Pythagorean theorem. So the horizontal distance here uh, is 7. Okay, I'm just counting these squares. And the vertical distance is also 7. So that means that that length is going to be the square root of 7 squared plus 7 squared. All right, that's the Pythagorean theorem that's finding the hypotenuse. Now, um, 7 squared plus 7 squared, okay, that's 98. So this is going to be the square root of 98. Now, the other uh, sides of this polygon, I can just count, all right? So I've got this horizontal piece, and that is 5. So I just counted that. All right, just trying to color code this a little bit. This vertical piece right here is three. So I counted that and I got three. Okay. Um, this little horizontal piece right there is two. So I counted that and I got two. And then I've got this vertical piece right here, which is 4. So I counted that, and I got 4. So if I add all those up, that should be the perimeter. OK, so I've got the square root of 98. All right, get out from under the radical, plus 5 plus 3 plus 2 plus 4. And I get that expression, but let's get the decimal. 23.899. I need to round this to two decimal places. Um, so I, I'm going to think of this as 89, and 89 rounds up to 90. So this will be 23. All right, and this is a length, so I'll just put units. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Go ahead and click here in the red apple to watch the next video. Click in the green apple to subscribe, or click the yellow apple for the full playlist.